want. Bacon. Uh -huh. you, you know I ain't sticking my hand in there. Look. I'm not sticking my hand in there. And you're not getting my toes. And I don't know if this is because he has the tusks or or what it is, but he actually licks the food up with his tongue. These weeds got out of control over here and I've laid my clear plastic over them. I'm gonna try to burn them up. Cause I try not to spray around my garden, obviously. Uh, we have three of the IBC totes there, there, and there. And three of the salt, four of the mineral buckets that we're gonna use. And we're gonna plant outside raised beds, if you will. The reason being is, as you can tell, my garden is just pitiful. I thought I had it amended enough. I thought I had added enough to it. With the, with the horse poop and the compost that I put in the holes as I planted the tomatoes and, and those types of things, I thought I had enough to at least get it started. And as you can tell, I did not. These tomatoes are just pitiful. Even the marigold isn't doing what it's supposed to do. So we are going to take some of the chips that we have asked for from various um, from various tree trimmers, and we are going to lay a base here, put our totes on the top, and then And we're gonna try these raised beds and see how we can do there. So I will keep you all posted. Once again, go big or go home. I gotta move some stuff for him. We don't normally feed in mineral buckets, but Paul might just have to get some because I am really digging this. And um, I would like to have about 10 more and about 10 more of these totes to use as well. Um, for drainage purposes, we are trying the net wrap in the bottom. That's one way to recycle the net wrap, and it will also, I hope, benefit draining. So, the way I've got this lined up here, I believe I will be able to run a drip irrigation straight across and water... I'm really excited. Now, I will say I got my, I got these uh, green mineral buckets from my neighbor. Thanks, Benny. And um, I need one more because it's, <laughs> because y'all can see. Now, my next plan, I'm going to do a raised bed from that corner to that corner, out four feet and box that in. That's my next project. I'll have to get some, I've already got the wood to go there. I will have to kill some very intense poison ivy and some pretty serious and aggressive poke salad and a couple of maple trees and a lot of ironweed and you know, Get some stuff rearranged over here, but that's my next soon. The reason that I'm doing the race beds is, you know, I told y'all last year, and I told you earlier that I thought I had amended this enough, and it's just not doing it, y'all. It, It's just not gonna, I mean, grass will barely grow in it. Look. 
My sunflowers didn't come up. My wildflowers haven't come up. Um, you know, marigolds will, marigolds will grow on a rock and those have been in the ground two months. The only thing this garden wants to grow is pigweed. That's it. I have got it planted. These are some yellow sweet uh, cherry tomatoes, bell peppers, sour gherkins, and of course a marigold for good measure. These are Jubilees. They are a orangey variety. These are ground cherries. First time growing them, about killed them, but planted them because I discovered them on a channel that I love to watch. Um, let's see, these are the near dead Pulsinator, some more of the little yellow cherries, the sweet cherries, and marigold for good measure. And I don't know, I may find a bucket and see if I can put that in there. But anyway, I, the heat, the four days of 100 degrees, even with water in, nearly killed everything I had. But maybe I can save it now that I have this little garden. And we'll just have to see. I'm very excited. Like it looks great. I used a mushroom compost. I'm not sure if I showed you exactly how I did everything, but on the bottom I put the net wrap that we take off the hay bales all winter. Then I put some of the corn stalks that we rolled. And then I put a little mushroom compost and garden soil on the top. It is clear over here. Oh, good. Mom, what's this? I've been waiting to do this for years. So, uh, hope you like my hat. It's a great one. Got it on Amazon. Has a ponytail holder. So, paws up on the heel and the IH finishing up the pastures, clipping the pastures. And he was a big help to me this morning, helping me get these beds made. And together we did have to run to the compost. <laughs> we did have to run up to co-op because I ran out of soil. And, um, but these chips are amazing. I'm really excited about that. I do have enough peppers and tomatoes and I'm going to finish out this other row of tomatoes. And I'm about to put the, um, so hook the soaker hose up on those. And let them be, let that run for a couple hours. So, right now, I'm going to get something to drink. And take a break in the shade. Because I'm wore out. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us here on, at Life on Helton Creek where life happens every day. Something is always going on. Haven't got the bunnies yet. I know I mentioned that on my last video in the notes. Um, we are getting two sisters, but we have not got the bunny hutch built yet. I was going to, at first, make them house bunnies. No pun intended, but I'm just not, I just don't have it in me. 
So we're gonna build them a, a hutch out in the shade and a nice roomy little house and um, just haven't had time to do it in 100 degree weather. It's just been too hot to even think about it. So I, maybe we'll work on it today and maybe that'll be a Father's Day project. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there and granddads and soon to be dads and you know, just happy Father's Day. I miss my dad terribly. Uh, I'm a daddy's girl. I was always a daddy's girl. I have such great memories of my dad. He was such a hardworking man and there were three of us children growing up and my mom stayed home and um, you know, she was the nurse in the clinic at school and the room mother and the PTO person and all the things at school and all the way through. And um, my dad worked really hard to keep it that way. It was really important to him that mom be home with us. And, um, you know, he worked hard. He made time when he could to get out in the yard and play baseball. He helped my brothers grow their first garden when they were in the FFA. Uh, my daddy had a had a hard growing up. He joined the army for a few years, was a paratrooper. He always said he uh, jumped. He took off more than he ever landed in an airplane because he jumped out of most of them. I don't know, he, he was a nature guy, he loved birds. He taught me a lot about gardening and birding and being outside and, um, you know, he was just a, he was just a great dad. Just a great dad. And, and Kent, you know, when Paul became a father, he had never been, he was the only child, he'd never really been around kids a lot and uh, he worked a lot too, but he took care of his boys and taught them a lot about farming and taking things apart and putting them back together. And and they're both good dads because of him. So I, you know, and both of my boys are excellent daddies. They love their children. They love spending time and doing things with and for their children. And uh, I don't know, I just couldn't ask for much more. So I hope that you have a blessed Father's Day. And if you're missing your daddy, my condolences. Uh, I miss mine every day. Miss mine every day. Thank you so much for joining us today at Life on Helton Creek. I hope you come back. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, leave me a comment. Isn't that beautiful? Look at those nails. I think I broke five. Digging in dirt today and pulling weeds and all those things. So anyway, y'all be blessed. And remember, you are never alone. Never.